morning, everybody, and welcome to the panel cast. I am your host, AJ. And as you can tell, this week is a little bit different. Um, it's the weeping because I have a good friend of mine here, Mr. Joel Katz of Fictional Studios. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm glad to be here. Uh-huh. Uh, Joel is, um, if you've been reading any of the new uh, stories and prints that I've been posting where I have an image and just all my words being written across it. Uh, the recent one we had was um, um, He Smiles. He Smiles, yeah. I, I believe we did. Joel's the guy that does does the art behind it. There is more coming. There is more coming. Uh, I'm the guy that writes it. Joel also did all the special artwork for the Zombie Beauty pageant we had last year. That was a very fun project. I, I really enjoyed drawing that. The, yeah. yeah, the logo that you may be familiar with, the queen with the roses in the background. It looks like a skull and crossbones, but kind of special. That's Joel because he's he's special. He's very special. He's also very nervous. So uh, tonight's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. expect, um, I'm going to warn everybody ahead of time. Uh, there will be some drug use on the show. We both vape and, and partake a lot. And uh, because of our nervousness, we'll probably be partaking quite a bit. So if any of that bothers you, then maybe this isn't the episode for you. But if you don't mind it, uh, please stick around and enjoy us. We're going to be talking a lot about Joel's artwork and how we got involved and uh, some of the stuff that we have in common. Uh, we were just talking, actually, about Transformers. Um, Joel is also a fan of Transformers. And Absolutely. And you should see his home. If you think my home is ridiculous, you can't even see the walls on Joel's home <clears throat> because they are wall-to-wall mock characters, mock toys. That's mint on card. That's what that means for those of you who are not in the know. Uh, mint on card figures on his wall that he uses as wallpaper. And it's just wall-to-wall, floor-to-floor. G.I. Joe figures and other action figures. Uh, you know, it's good sound dampening. Uh, <laughs> you, you got a lot of traffic on your street. If you coat the walls with carded action figures, it really cuts down on a lot of that noise. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You have what, five, six bedrooms in your house? There's, there's, there's a few. It, it's a multi tiered, multi floored home. It's, it's, a, it's a crazy house, too. Um, it was built by a woodshop teacher. And, and there's a lot of wood. The attic alone, it's never ending story back there. It's, it's, it, 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 you can start off on one side of the house and walk in to a tiny hatch into the attic. You can go around and work your way all the way to the other side of the house. Okay, I did it. Lots of spiders. <laughs> but um, it was an adventure. I brought headphones. Um, <laughs> Were you doing up? Were you up there just to, to see I just, your journey? I just, you know? I just I was actually trying to find a leak, and so that was basically why I was Indiana Jonesing it into this attic, which I'll be honest with you was a mixture of excitement, and terror, yeah. also because nobody in the house was going to go get me. They're like, "We'll call, <laughs> we'll call someone." <laughs> But we're not going up there. <laughs> we'll saws a hole where yeah, you we're are. Not, we're not, there's, this is an environment of spiders. <laughs> <laughs> we're not having any of that. So just we're gonna we're gonna communicate through knocks in the roof, you know, in the ceiling. Right. And uh, just really anything to show you're alive. Did but you did you leave a one end of the string of rope at, at Aces? Man. Sorry. My my dog, he likes to eat people food. Yeah, but also, I'm slick at leaving the plate around. Let's go. Out. 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 Look at you. Look what you did. Look what you did. Um, no, we, I love Ace. He's a good dog, but we don't feed him people food, so we're trying to keep him. Yeah, my bad, my bad. Oh, no, no worries. Uh, so did you at least leave the uh, end of the string at that one entrance so you can follow it back? Um... Honestly, I just paid attention to where I was going. It was an adventure. I was determined to find what I was looking for. I did find it, and then I got the hell back. Because being in an attic, like I said, it's crazy up there. There's, right. There was dust from, you know, 82. <laughs> at least 82, you know, sitting up there. 
So. But uh, did you find more room to store the <laughs> toys and your action figures in? Because, I mean, ultimately, any free space in your house. You know, someday, maybe 100 years from now, somebody goes in the attic and they finally go in, like, the far reaches of it. They're going to find a gold mine of collectibles right. just in boxes, you know, with just some sort of cryptic note, you know. That's fine. Okay. okay. And your bones buried next to it because you got stuck or yeah. something fell on top that of it. That is just, I went up and I never came back. That's awesome. it. You know, not right now. <laughs> someday. <laughs> someday. At, at some know. point, like, well, that's when we're here, Joel. That's what happened to Joel. Yeah. So don't worry about it. It'll be fine. Um, but. You may be new to any of our watchers and listeners and stuff, but you're not new to the industry and to. Neighborhood. You've been doing art for a very long time, haven't you? I mean, a very long time, yeah. I mean, um, there was always, like, other kids that I would be around that some kids liked to do art when we were little. Mm -hmm. Some didn't. Some just did the Noodle Project. Other people went crazy with the Noodle Project. All right, like, some people did the turkey handprint. Right. Other, other people did the sh out of that turkey handprint, right? And... You know, that definitely stayed with me. It was more of something to do and something to just mess with all the time. Honestly, trying to sit in a chair and, like, do schoolwork, you know, I'm an 80s kid. Right. And what did they want to do in the 80s? I don't know the desk. Well, if you're doing too much, <laughs> they just wanted you on meds. Right. And so my folks were not for that. They're like, no, we'll just, we'll just we'll tell him he needs to sit in a chair. So just basically the focus, everything had our eye. You know, to the detriment of when I was supposed to be doing work, I was still just drawing. But anyway, right. even like pay attention, you know, that is that is how I did it. So notes all the way through. I do have notes from like junior high and high school that somehow I just kept because they were just. Or or do you think that someday they might be worth something because you're you're that uh, egotistical? Uh, oh God, oh, <laughs> no. Um, just somehow they survived, and they're so funny to look at because. Um, as an artist, you're kind of always wondering where you're, where are you at? Right. You know? I mean, I, I don't think, I don't think I've met any, any personally known any artists that, that ever felt they were there yet. And I've known some people that, I mean, you know, you get emotional looking at some of their art. Right. Um, and they're just that good. Um, but even but in, in case real quick, mm -hmm. if you guys are wondering, I'll be splicing uh, his artwork throughout this recording so you'll see what I'm talking about and not just have to rely on the word that he knows how to draw <laughs> so, uh, if that were the case I would just interview myself because I'm a fantastic artist artister uh, um, but no <laughs> he didn't actually warn me you were gonna show you yeah so like here I, yeah I guess you're gonna see it you're gonna see it so yeah. we'll see you'll we'll see, see some some of his doodles you'll be seeing you should be seeing some right now um, or I could just forget to do it and you could be just staring at us talking <laughs> imagining his artwork showing up right now and, uh, yeah there you go. um what I, got you starting what was it that what was the spark okay so um oh man this is this is ridiculous so in elementary school uh the ninja turtles was a thing and um i i, I drew a couple ninja turtles at school some kids thought they were cool, okay? And then one of my friends said, dude, you could probably get people to give you like a buck for one <laughs> if you had drawn a quick Ninja Turtle. And I was like, really? And so that's what happened. So I had, I had an Altoids can, okay? And I was slinging Ninja Turtle pictures, okay? One survived from elementary school. It's, it's awful. But in elementary school at that time, that right. was totally worth a buck. So I was stoked. So I had a nice little, nice little run of selling, you know, ninja. if you wanted all four in a picture, oh shit, you were like five bucks. You know. That's when you did the not really a deal. <laughs> uh, <laughs> buy yeah. four for five, but buy one for a dollar each. <laughs> Bro, you, want, you want all of them on the same page. You know what I mean? Action poses. You got different stuff you're asking for. Right. And again, they were awful, but, um, you know, and I just drew all the time. Um, I would pass between a couple friends in elementary school. We'd have a picture, so we would draw a terrain. And we would just draw all these little characters. And at that point, you'd pass the paper around, and you'd draw 
the missile flying over, and then you just explode and turn their character. That was back. always one of my favorite things to participate in. Instead of passing notes, we were passing art, and you know we just add to the picture and stuff. Yeah. And continue the the battle or discussion that was happening that began in the page, but just in you know what may have started as like this little picture, like dude, look, it's Minnie Mouse has now turned into Minnie Mouse versus the apocalypse. And like, you know, just all this yeah. detail and stuff that everybody would add into one way or another. It just, well, just you and a friend. It always ended up looking pretty, pretty gnarly and apocalyptic. Right. Uh, and far from what you imagine. Well, I mean, far enough that, you know, we would get caught sometimes. <laughs> right. And, you know, I honestly don't know if my mom was ever contacted, but um, they were not happy to teach us run, please, you know, because it, there was nothing wrong with us. We were just kids drawing stuff but i mean there was a lot of dismemberment blood everywhere but it was just little right. boys blowing shit up on a piece of paper um but we weren't thinking about it in any other way except that we were having fun and, you know none of us were caring how i think really well we drew it because we were all at different levels of art but we were just messing around on the paper and, and having fun and so i hope that that's something like you never lose if you're doing art i mean I don't think you can be good at something if you're forced to do it. Right. You can be okay. You could probably be passable, but that's only going to be while you have that pressure to do it. But as soon as that pressure is gone, you're going to, you're going to let it go, you know, but, um, it has to be something I think you're going to, you're going to have to want to do it, whether there is money or not. And hopefully you can find ways to support yourself doing the things you love. But if it's something you wouldn't still do, if you now had millions of dollars and you didn't need any money anymore, right? Would you still care? Well, I think that would be the thing that you. Well, let's say that's the difference between what people actually consider gratification in their life. Mm -hmm. You know, if getting that dollar is all that matters to you, so that you can provide, even if, if you're just wanting to provide security for your family, mm -hmm. or you're trying to live like a pompous ass. Yeah. You know, whatever the reason may be, if that's why you're doing something, then you're right. That's not love, mm -hmm. unless love is the money. Money, yeah. love is the stability, and you're just trying to hustle your way to find it. And that's where you know we're talking about art. I mean, toys. You know what we you know want to like. We were talking about transformers. Okay, not to not to pull it back, but no, the, please and and interpret the whole. Well, uh, so basically, like like transformers to pull it back to that. <clears throat> though it's it's um art has so many forms and i don't think it's it's there yet but at some point i i guarantee you toys will become recognized as not just marketing but as art to the point where because and then this is how i feel about some of them. i mean look at some of the more complex um options you have in this room mm -hmm. that you know toy originated with a very rudimentary, you know, tiny wood object, you know what I mean? Maybe no moving parts, you know, for a kid at a different time period in history. To there's more engineering in some of the pieces you have here, okay, uh, than most major components of the motor, okay? Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's, that's above and beyond. And even smaller pieces. Tiny pieces that all have to function. So you're taking, you know, that's the ultimate marriage of, form and function uh, together into something that really is essentially supposed to be a, a toy. You know what I mean? Right. But, in, you know, epic, epic. A Mountain Dew poured into another Mountain Dew, you know, and then fused together, and then you added the Pepsi to it, you know? Um, and a droplet of a couple yeah. of, of relaxing agents. Yeah, whatever. And it, it just, but that's all that kind of... Which he had, like, three or four gulps of before we sat down. Potentially, yeah, yeah. So tonight's episode should should get better it's gonna be great or slower <laughs> but um if, if i did want to say one thing to folks if we were talking about art and um loving art um that's where you know specifically when we're talking about toys and art together um when i'm purchasing toys or there's things that i'm looking for uh people that i follow stuff that i, I collect on a regular basis is really because it's the art the people that made those and I don't care if it's a major company, they still had to have a sculptor, they still had to somebody do, you know, to work on the computer to do it, if they were using it that way, if they're doing conventional right. sculpts, somebody made that. And however I can get my hands on it, that, that 
that came from some brains. Some people made So for that. you, it makes you feel like you're part of the art, yeah. or at least given to the art community? Yeah. I mean, you know, people, some folks are really hardcore about me. Need customs and things that are very just like, you know, low run, super hard to find. You know, there's a lot of amazing things just done by artists, and some of them are paid by a corporation, and some of them are working freelance. But you know what? If you, you're getting a piece of their art. I work 2D art, you know? That's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this this is why I respect it. It's a, it's a three-dimensional object. Um, it's designed for enjoyment, you know? Mr. Coffee's designed to make coffee. They're pretty simple. That That's what that thing does, you know what it's I mean? It's like Mr. Fusion. Mr. Fusion. Is it... Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, um... Well, let's let's yeah. touch on that real quick. I find it amazing, and and I'm I apologize. I I wanted to start off with getting a little background control, but we're conversating, so you know we're good. We'll get there. We'll get there. But I find it amazing. Like when you came in my office the first time, you were like a kid in a candy store. Huh? You get on. You were looking at all my stuff, and I don't feel I like I have. I that. still do. I still I, do. I don't feel like I have that much. As far as collection goes, I am proud of my collection, but I go over to your place and I'm like, my collection is this compared to what you have. Why does what I have all you still? Oh, well, okay, it's um But I'm in the same way. Like I go to your place, I'm I see what I have, I look at your stuff, I'm like, holy shit. I've been lucky enough to to have friends that had really badass collections. Okay. Most of them weren't very public about it, honestly. You know what I mean? Like a lot of them had like a room in the house. That was their stuff. They didn't really want people like, you know, in the same room. You know, they were kind of cagey about it because they had nice collections and right. sometimes huge collections. You know, um, I had a friend years and years and years ago when I was very, very young. You know, um, he had a toy shop and, you know, it, you know, it didn't survive. Um, there was a time when comics and toy shops took that mad dive in the 90s. Yeah. Oh, well, that's when Marvel went bankrupt. Yeah, Marvel exactly. Situation. And um, so, anyway, I mean, basically, we'll tell that story another day. Whoo, yeah, that, that's another story for a lot of people. But I mean, you know, what he would sell at the store had nothing to do with what he had at the house. And you know, it, he would bring over people he thought were you know cool, had been around a million right. times. You know, you weren't a problem. So, um, everybody's collection is going to be different. I, I don't care. <clears throat> somebody could have a, a, it's like a record collection. I have some friends that started collecting way after me. You know what I mean? Whatever their, their collections, a certain size, but right. man, let me tell you, if you look at what they have, you know, it's, it's, it's a beautiful collection and, and it's never going to be the same. I mean, yeah, I, I don't care. I mean, other people that are equally, let's say even some of your favorite characters, like if I was to say someone else out there has a room and they love Optimus Prime, love it. I guarantee you, you still are going to have a different set. Because there's probably, I mean, Optimus Prime is probably one of the most. And he's been around since 84. He's been around since 84. He has been in every version. I don't care how silly it was to, yep. to off brands, to whatever, has probably been done 800 times. What do you think? And, I mean, he started off the entire franchise as a die yeah. figure yeah. to begin with, you know, and became Optimus. So, yeah, there's but, yeah. so many different variations. I wish I could afford all the different variations. But somebody else is going to choose. Right. Somebody's got the ones I don't have. They've got the ones you don't have. So even loving the same thing, um, you can be at awe at, at what somebody has. Because, again, there is so much. There's so much. I mean, you know, uh, I've never known somebody on, like, an open budget where they could just collect everything. Um, you do kind of have to choose, you know, where is your money going to go. Um, so when you see somebody else's collection... It's like being able to go into a store and now they've got everything open and you get to look at it and enjoy it. They're sharing it. Um, plus it's a community. It's a community. Yeah, that, it definitely is. I, I, I walk in, when I walked into your place, I was immediately brought back. And that's what I love about toy collecting. Mm -hmm. Is that I'll sit there and I'll see some stuff where I'm just like, and I remember when I was a kid and I was playing with that. And I remember I had that as a kid. And I remember Oh, when did this version come out? You know, it begins to, it draws me in and it makes me more interested because not only do I like looking at the toys and being remembered 
where I was when I started collecting, but I like to hear everybody else's story about, well, why Optimus? Why G.I. Joe? Why this? You know, because, I don't know, it just makes people... I don't invite a lot of people in my office to hang out. I actually try not to invite, you know. They, they come in, they look around, and then they leave, and I'm cool with that. But there are certain collectors that I can have in here that I can trust to yeah. not only respect my stuff, but I, I'll, I, like, I'll let you transform whatever you want. Yeah, but Because I know you have the respect for I have a lot of respect for the fact that there's some in here, not with all the instructions. <laughs> because... You know, uh, it would just, I would, if I heard a joint snap, I could lose consciousness. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> so I'd have to be over something soft because, yeah, I'd probably pass out. But, uh, but what I mean to say is, is like, um, when, when that happens, you know, when we come across, I love the story. I'm just a fan yeah. of the story. And as a writer, I, you know, I'm always fascinated by everybody's stories. So that's why I'm yeah. always like, and everybody's going to have one. Right. And so, but sometimes you walk into something into a place and you're hit with your story, <laughs> and you find uh, not just amusement, but kind of like a kinship and a camaraderie at that point. You're like, "Damn, dude, you remember the speeder bikes? Man, did you? Yeah, you know, you connect, and then you start talking about more than just toys and figures, yeah. you, you know. And, and that's what I love about it. That's what I love about the community." Nobody cares about politics. Nobody cares about like what you do in life, any of that stuff. You know, I didn't even ask you what you do for real life. All I know is that he's an artist that collects toys and loves them as much as I do. And that to me is fine. Well, yeah. I, I want to bring, you're talking about community of collecting though. I will tell you, um, hands down, one of the reasons I, I, I have what I have mm -hmm. um, is, you know, I have pieces in there that I would not have gotten if a friend hadn't found it for me for cheap. Right. You know, um, people look out for each other. I've got something, you've got something, you didn't really want it, we traded. Um, you know, people got the word that somebody was just getting loose of a lot, you know, a whole collection of whatever. Right. And they say, hey, dude, get down there today. Um, Plus there's also like the slight word now, man. Like if I hear about something that yeah. I can't grab for you, I'll hit you up. Yeah. I know you like them. Yeah. And vice versa, you know. You call you, Joel calls me up sometimes. Like, well, what transformer are you into this week? What's what are you yeah. what are you what are you looking for? You know, I'll just keep an eye out for it, and that's cool. I like it. I enjoy that, and I enjoy that for us in the community. I have had friends that love to collect, but they are very they are very singular. Right. They like a character. They've got every one of that character, and they will hunt down whatever it is. But they really don't prefer to have a large collection, and they don't they don't care. You could you could have a museum, a giant museum at your house, and they they don't care. Right. They, they like with their, you know what I mean? So quantity is irrelevant to some, to some folks. If that's your thing, that is your thing. And um, I will say when it comes to Christmas, though, it's much, uh, it's much easier, uh, <laughs> you know, when you got to figure out what somebody likes, but also a little more open. Right. Uh, it's a little hard for, you know, my wife has a hard time shopping for me yeah. any holiday because she doesn't yeah. know, she figures I already have it and she doesn't know what I like. Yeah. specifically and stuff and you know i know exactly what i'm getting you for a holiday <laughs> you know because we collect the same kind yeah, of stuff yeah. and we know already yeah you've got you've got a lot of options so i would say if somebody is interested in the art of toys collecting doing art i don't care doing art of toys i mean that's yeah how many times i've just not really known what to do and all i did was just have to turn you know two degrees and look at an area in my office and there's a, there's a, there's a ton of options to look at to spur, you know. Well, and, and action figures are a way, way to, you can pose them out. Yeah. If you're a writer, like a comic book writer like I am, I'll pose them out and I'll tell my artist, look, I want it from this point of view. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is the action. This is the pose I want to see, in, you know, and boom, there you have it. Yeah. And then they use that to storyboard and eventually going to the art. So it influences one another. Oh, I'd have to tell you a, a Transformer artist, um, you know, strike me down with lightning, but I guarantee you every artist that's ever drawn for any comic company that's done any Transformer art, if they did not have, yeah, 
hundred percent of them had transformers in the room every second they were drawing. <laughs> right. Because the, the complexity of trying to draw all these different angles and be interesting and all this stuff. I mean you're talking about Plus so with Transformers, there's a lot of small, tiny moving bits all over the place. That, it's a nightmare. That's even in the cartoons of the comic books. Yeah. And so to draw that. So exactly. So a hundred percent of them had to have a lot of them around so that they could make sure that they could nail that so that your brain feels that all those angles are correct. Right. And so, um, again, a lot of respect to any, any artist that thought they could tackle any Transformers art project. I don't even, I don't care what it is. Um, they worked hard. They worked hard. And I bet you they threw a lot of crap in the trash. Yeah. You know, before they got it right. Uh, That's what always drives me crazy about you artist people, all the amount of stuff you throw in the trash. <laughs> Would well, be like you know, take up major landscaping in my um, on my wall that isn't full of transformers. I definitely used to, but I stopped at a certain point because I realized you don't you know. <clears throat> I wanted to get each drawing, each thing I was doing, each project to look right, um, and that's all I cared about. And didn't realize okay, if I'm working on a lot of different things, that idea you can shelf it. As long as you're keeping, you know, what you've worked on. If you write something, I'm sure there's writers that are famous that you love that, you know, they'll all say, oh, yeah, I had this project. I wrote it when I was 22. I'm 52. And then I finally got the funding for that project. Nobody wanted to fund it till now. Right. And then so, bam, now that project that, that was sitting there forever now gets used. You know, not everything gets used in immediate chronological order. Um that's why I try to explain to people. Do you think ZKS was the first comic book I wanted published? It wasn't. I had been working on comic books a lot before that, trying yeah. to get something to go, find, trying to find an artist, trying to find a story that'll stick. Right. You know, and it took that long. It took a good five years for me to find somebody that was willing to draw one of my stories. Yeah. You know, it's like I, I totally understand on the same level. I have tons of stories just laying back there. Yeah. You know that. People do like, but I, I could care less because it's not what's working right now. Yeah. You know, so I put it on the back burner, yeah. which I'm sure you have to too sometimes. Uh, I mean, I have my own personal art projects I've been wanting to do, and I'm, you know, midway through most of them. But, um, that's. No, if only I had a project for you. Oh, yeah, there's none of those. Uh -huh. um, that, that also, we can bring up time. You know what I mean? Um, if you're a person out there and you have time to do art, I think time is probably the most important tool. I, I don't care what I could tell you. If you say, oh, man, um, I got one of those 50% off coupons at Michael's. What do I go get? <laughs> you know, I'm going to be an artist. And I'm here. Just give me some stuff. Um, you know, really, you can, have, uh, you can have a big pen, a number two pencil. You can have a Sharpie. Um, your cheap Crayolas, you can go to the 99 cent store and get stuff that you could do some pretty cool art with, uh, for time, you know, you do have to set aside time to do it. Yeah. Period. Uh, same thing with writing, you know, anything done well, again, you know, any toy that we're going to look at in this room, anything, somebody put some time into. And so if you ever want to transport yourself for a second and you're looking at that specific piece, Try to picture somebody in a room, and you're going to picture whatever you picture the guy looks like, the girl looks like, whatever. But they're in that room, you know, in the dark, maybe, looking at that screen. They're looking over the modeling for this thing. They twist it around. They've been looking at that same stupid open fist, which is just one of the hands that comes with it. Mm -hmm. They've been looking at that for three days, and they're over it. Um, but they did that. I'm not sure Rob Life. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, he does fine now, but back in the 90s, that was yeah. the joke. So like, hands, feet, no. cap, cap pouches, life healed. Man. But I will, well, yeah, that, he's a whole other. <laughs> he's his own episode. He's his own episode. Yeah. Um, so, I never have to worry about, I think, maybe knowing where to find inspiration to do some art. <clears throat> but um, even if you want to do your own original art, um, which sometimes when you do a lot of fan art, 
you know, you gotta, you gotta have practice, not just doing that. Um, you need to still be able to remember that you could just draw whatever you wanted and just mess around. So that is when, when you do work with other people, they are going to have you do things you would not have done on your own. Any art that I'm ever going to do with you, I, I did that art because there was, you know, I'm trying to fulfill something for what you wrote. Right. It's automatically not going to be something I could have ever done on my own. I would not have put those. But I'm together. also one of those people that I want you to like the story. Yeah. At the same time, so that maybe it will inspire you. I'm not saying my writing inspires. I'm just saying maybe working on it would inspire you to get more ideas for it or more stuff for it. And a lot of them put your own creativity behind it. You know? It would just bring up a topic for another episode. Why are often people hired to do the thing when they don't even like it? If you're a director and you have absolutely no interest in that particular character or thing you're doing, and they hire you versus hiring somebody that loves it, topic for another time. I think it's, there, there's no need for that. There's yeah, simple as the mighty dollar. Yeah. Um, whatever pays the bills. Whatever pays the bills. Which my, is, my, my favorite actor ever was Robin Williams. And he even said when asked, hey, why do you, why do, you do a movie like RV? He's like, rent. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. You can be artistic all you want. Yeah. You can do all the all the twenty four hour photos and all that stuff that you want. Yeah. Yeah, but at the end of the day, you still got to pay rent, and every now and then you got to throw in an RV to yeah. make that rent. Yeah. That allows you to do the other movies that you want to do. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's in the same way. You know, like we got to pay the bills sometimes. Yeah. And eventually go back to what we like. It's just when paying the bills becomes more predominant. And, in your life that when you get home you don't have time for the art anymore because it does take energy and um and desire and a want uh, and know, there are sometimes when you're working you get burnt out on that you you look at it you want to do it you get close you sit down <clears throat> you know um but it's that weird line between pushing yourself in a good way Pushing yourself in a way where, like, then if, again, if you're just like, well, I'm just going to do it because I said I'd do it. I don't even want to be doing this right now. But it's just a, you know, um, I don't ever feel that way. Mm -hmm. I don't ever feel that way. We're <clears throat> um, pushing yourself away. You know, um, at a minimum, you know, I can draw on a napkin, which is something I love to do. I collect the crap out of them. Um, I have maybe, I don't know. A little over 150 napkins that I've hoarded over over time. So <clears throat> and that's why I'm getting saying time for people who want to get better specifically at art. Better at least that you enjoy looking at your art better. You know, um, you're not worried about fame and glory because let me tell you that's a you know starving artist is a thing. That's where that you know that that comes from. It, it's a lot of people work really hard for it, but um, do it anywhere. That you're sitting around just 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 doodle that's it i promise you if you just continually doodle and draw whenever you can you're going to get better um, and do it for yourself yeah you know don't don't do it because you don't feel embarrassed that you're doing it no you know if you're in a coffee shop and, and you're worried someone's going to come and see you look at your art who cares Fuck them. uh you know do it for yourself I'm just going to use what we were talking about earlier. Like you might say, <clears throat> because you saw how like my particular collection that I have at my house and the size difference and how much quantity we've got. But remember that's the same, same idea. Mm -hmm. um, I don't care how far along in this art thing I am. When I see somebody else and, and the art they're doing, um, they're still doing their thing. It, it's still their own style. And so, and I, I like to see art period. I love to see people do it. Um, any tips I have, I try to give them to people because I just want them to maybe not have to get stuck on that same hurdle I had. Maybe I'm gonna save you two years before I finally got certain things right. Right. Um, but, and again, same thing, you do have to love it. If you just really wish you could do art, but then you really actually don't have the, the, the love when you actually do it, maybe that isn't your medium but find your medium. I guarantee you everybody has one. That's the thing. Um, I can't draw at all, but you know, I'm, I'm starting a stick figure webcomic. But, 
<laughs> don't laugh at me. <laughs> well, man, honestly, that's what's, what's crazy is that people have actually made amazing, you know what I mean? Stick, yeah, yeah. stick yeah. figures. So, um, it trying to gauge the quality of art really is, is, you know, again, it is the person and how you're looking at it. But, um, if it is something you love to do, uh, you're never bored. When you're waiting in an airport, you don't got to worry, man. You know, it's your when I'm waiting in an airport, when I'm waiting for food, if I'm in a car, I've gone been on like a long Uber ride or something like that. Now some of the drawings are pretty shaky, but you know what I mean? Um, I'm just never worried about occupying time, you know? Um, and so that's something you can have. Uh, sometimes people, uh, if you've ever seen somebody not know where their phone is in the time when they've got too much time ahead of them. Some people, you know, I mean, when was the last time you were on like a five hour car ride and you forgot your uh, phone at home? And you suddenly had five hours and you couldn't mess with it. You know, um, if you've got some pens and pencils, you've got a small art pad on you. If you're willing to just relax, you're not going to get your emails for a while. You'll survive. You know, just doodle, just play around. So it, it you can be your that. friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. You can't prove that I will survive. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you can eat paper, maybe. <laughs> but, and you know, and again, like I said, if, if, you know, if a conventional pen and ink or color, and you know, painting, acrylic, you know, oil, all that stuff is not your thing. Um, again, when I say, you know, that three letter word art, it, you know, that, that is somebody that makes furniture to somebody that writes screenplays to, you know what I mean? Whatever, it, again, people may not, may not think. Whatever this, form of expressionism you're choosing to exhibit, that's art, whether it be vocal, yeah. Drawing, singing, kicking somebody, mowing the lawn can be an art form uh, to a landscaper. Uh, absolutely. Know? Tell me you've never driven by a house and you like double took a house. You're like, damn. Right. damn. Right. And it's a house, but you, you know, you looked at it like, you know, you practically crashed into a you know, plastic trash. Yeah, double check like, is that big grass? Man, you is know, that real grass. You know, you're of a certain age when you like do a triple take on a house, like, what? <laughs> you know, um, but. Is that Kentucky Rye? <laughs> You know, you know, but it's, uh, but again, it is, it is still an art form. Um, I mean, I know this sounds silly, but if you're in Ikea, guess what? If you see a piece of furniture there that you like, right. a designer, you know, though they were paid by Ikea, designed it. They had to come up with that design. It had to pass, you know, the people that were asking what they needed to do. They said to someone, look, we need you to make this and such and such, the, the, the Flark Lugan, whatever the hell, you know, that particular thing. <laughs> right. it, but they came up with it. And that was, that was a bit of someone. And um, so sometimes I think you can find some really cool beauty in the most mundane things, like um, console controllers. There's an art to console controllers. And uh, are you referring to the latest release of the Deadpool Xbox controller? Uh, you know what? I, I want to try to pretend like I could claim I was, but I didn't know that it came out. It came out. <laughs> it has a butt. I didn't, but that sounds right. That sounds right. But there's even an art to controllers. Yes. Okay. So again, you know what people are going to want to pay, what people are going to want to do to get that special one. Um, so there's, there's art all over the place. Um, you picked up your laptop. Somebody had to design the aesthetics of that laptop. So it, it's, um, I just, again, people got to find that thing and if they find it, but, uh, but be open. Uh, with toys, there are things that I do enjoy collecting, but I have a lot of random, <clears throat> random one or two pieces of different collections. I didn't feel the need to buy all of it. I couldn't, so I just picked a couple. Right. But they were just awesome. So just something that's good is good. If you go into a comic book shop, you know, root through those 50 cent dollar comics. They, they, there's still bins. Most comic shops still do have, you know what I mean, some dollar bins. Um, if you want to do art, and you leaf through those bins, if that book that you find for a dollar, so what, you only have issue 15 out of 200 and whatever, but the art in that issue is amazing and the cover is awesome and it's a dollar, who cares? You just picked up a whole chunk of art to help you look at art you like, first right. off, and it was a dollar. And again, you don't, it's, that's just cheap, easy fun. Um, Speaking of toys as an art form, you brought something for us today, didn't you? Oh, I brought that just as good luck. No, uh, no, no. Pull it out, sir. You brought a toy. Uh, well, 
And you start talking about art and toys. Yeah, I mean, it's true. I mean, I'm assuming everybody watching this probably has their own interest in toys. I'm assuming. Maybe. No, I don't know. I don't know. But you brought a toy that he's embarrassed to pull uh, okay. out. <laughs> All right. So basically, can I give a little bit of... Um... No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean... Again, one big difference too in collecting. So, for instance, I don't have near the badassery of uh, Transformers that that you've got here. Um, but uh, there's also art in customizing, mm -hmm. and where they're the same is if you really want to get into customization. My God, I mean, dude, the engineering out there of people making custom parts for Transformers. Of which I have a few of. You can fill every, can I go ahead and say it? You can fill every gap on every transformer now with um, custom parts that people have designed. They come in the right color. You can fit it in there. There's just so yeah. many goodies. Um, but that's all thanks to a lot of it is 3D technology too. Yeah. Again, allowing us to express our art form yeah. without having to, well, now you have to fork out a bunch of money. But I mean, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. without having to beg somebody to please like it and make you money to do it. You know? Yeah, um, and so same thing with just any other figures. So I, I mean, I, I like to take just a you know a standard one twelve figure. You can usually pop heads and arms off of all of them and mess around. Um, it's to me, it's just another art form. People that customize anything, they're, they're taking something. Whether it's if you see, you know, a dropped Honda from the mid '90s that's got just a ridiculous sparkle paint job and it's got all this and that. And it's lower to the point where it's pretty much scraping on like marbles, but they did an amazing job. They customized that. Well, you can do that with anything. And toys is, just, I'm sure, the world of just customizations is a whole other business in itself. Mm -hmm. But um, you can have a lot of fun. Uh, you can even do it on the cheap if you want to. You just got to keep your eyes open. They're familiar. Rich has been on the show. Yeah. He's a part of the show. So, you know, we're all familiar with the customizations and stuff. Yeah. So stop trying to buy yourself time and put off the fact that you won't show us. Anything. All right. Well, I mean, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it. But uh, basically, uh, Mezco did a lot of the parts for me, but there's probably about four different figures worth of goodies in there. Um, there's weapons spilling out everywhere. I got knives tucked in, in belts, um, a bunch of it's cloth. Um, but a lot of the parts, you know, the base figure, uh, minus the head, uh, I got in the dollar bin. <laughs> so I sank the rest of my cash into just having fun, trying to make a barbarian. I thought, okay, let me find some bits and pieces and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna make this type of character. So this is, I like the cloth. It's really impressive. Yeah. So, you know, remember when you're doing something like this, though, um, though there are people that make really good money making customizations, I think even Richard, if he was here right now, he would agree. Um, you customize something for your likes. This is, this is, this is something you're making because you're making it the way you want it to be. Or if you're making a gift for a friend, um, which actually between people who like this stuff that's actually a pretty big gift giving somebody a custom because mm. it's their time it's their effort that they put into it um, but again this is something you do because you want to do it this does not have to be for everybody some people are gonna be like dude why are, why I'm not gonna sit down with you and you know Lego together some parts but you know other people I've actually sat some friends down before and just we weren't doing anything I busted out of a bunch of boxes, had just a bunch of parts, just a bunch of bodies, head, weapons, and I was just like, hey, we're going to watch this scene. We're going to just you one. And I said, just, you know, just mess with it. And by the end of a movie, whether they realized it or not, they had put together something. Mm -hmm. They didn't realize that they just, you know, like once they had the option to make something, you know, they were like little kids. They just kind of did it. Um, That's like ghostwriting. Yeah. Same thing. You know, yeah. you're just not paying attention. Moving. Just... You know, however you got to get it out, it's 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 this. You know, it's the same thing as a person with a guitar that can be talking to you, and they're just plinking, and you know they're listening to you, but they're just they're just lightly messing around. You know, I mean, it's it's. I'm I'm sure your brain, you know, is moving all the time, right? So you know, we're 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 a mixture of do. Yeah, 
yeah, we have our ways to slow, to slow, <laughs> to slow the clock. <clears throat> yeah. But it's that, I mean, um, these are all really sweet ways to focus, though. And I, I need a lot of focus. Okay, I can't even lie on camera. Too many people know me too well. Um, you know, if focus is your is your is a difficulty for you, um, have those things around you that help you with that. You know, um, so or if you're gonna do if you are gonna do projects with other people, um, there's some guidance there. Sometimes you don't know what to do. Um, That's why I, whenever I'm working with anybody, I make sure they like the material beforehand. Yeah. Because you'll tell and they'll work whether they appreciate the material or not, whether they like working on the project or not. And I don't, plus I don't want to feel like I'm forcing anybody. You know, that's why I'm always asking, do you like it? Do you like, you yeah. know, because, because if you liked it and you're, it gives you ideas and you want to work on it, then that inspires me to do more. Yeah. You know, and because and, I just, I like to be involved, you know. For me, writing is a solo job. Which is why I like comics because I, I like how it brings all of us together to work on a project. Yeah. So that's what it does for me. Um, but same with toys. Like I would love to be able to get people in here. I was thinking we could do a segment on here one time. Uh, call it uh, Transforming Confessionals. Oh. Yeah, we'll just come in here and I'll give you a complex transformer with instructions and a you know, and and, and I'll sit here on my side with mine. And we'll just chat while transforming. Okay, just, yeah, that's fine. But it, I think I think a lot of the truth will come out. But just like doing the hot sauce challenge, right? How it ramps up. So you're like, today, you know, we're gonna we're gonna transform a twenty you know twenty five dollar figure that we found at Ross the other day. Right. You know, that's level one. You know, you turn up the heat. A couple episodes later, you know, you're transforming a two hundred and fifty dollar. Uh, Highly sought after transformer, and that's when the heat's up. That's when you're like, you know what, dude, I'll take the ghost pepper if I don't have to transform this. You know what? I will up that and give you a thousand dollar combiner. Oh my god. Oh man. I have I have a, actually I have a couple confect up there at the very top. Yeah. You see that one? Oh yeah. That was fourteen. Yeah. But that that set, not even me knowing what you know about it, is each piece is its own episode. Each piece is its yeah. own. <laughs> Again, the, the the time, and this is why at some point I think I already know, but I mean I really wish the world already was recognizing you know that art form. People are going to get angry with me, but there's going to be you know, I'm not going to say classical painters' names, but I'm sorry. There's there's art that I've looked at that's considered you know priceless. Right. And then I look at some of the things that people consider mundane in the, in the toy world or the comic world, um, you know, stories that are being written and put out there that are just fabulous to the point of any classic. I mean, you know, if somebody tells me, oh, yeah, I love, I love all of Jane Austen's books. My girlfriend loves those. Um, and they're great. But there's people pumping out some amazing stories yeah. um, constantly. And... Um, it, well, that's why I figured if we did the transforming confessional, we'll get everybody's stories out. Oh, yeah, they're going to get the stories. Look, I'll try. You'll be I'll too try. focused. I'll try. Not to yeah. break something, and you'll be like, look, I cheated on my wife 17 times. Okay? <laughs> like, <laughs> wait, what? What? Why did I say what? <laughs> Damn yeah. you, clap yeah. your Oh, man, I'm even trying to watch my language. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so I imagine, like, you know when your mind just checks out and you're just so focused on it? That's how you get with some of these transformers. Mm -hmm. So I thought it would be an awesome idea to do like a segment where we just do something. No, we won't do it today, Joel. Oh, okay. <laughs> give, me, give me a chance to warm up. But the future <laughs> reference, there may be a segment. But yeah, because it's just, again, reminding you, this is my first This is my first time here today. Yeah, but it's the second time I'll already be, you know, I'll be good. But... Um, well, let's get back to some more questions, some more interesting okay, questions. Cool. Uh, why don't we step away from, from this little art form? I'm going to try and zoom in here a little bit and, and, and just make it all about Joel oh, no. on this part of the night. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Are we okay? Are we okay? Are we okay? Oh, yeah. Just get cozy. All right, guys. This is, again, this is because of the format. Cozy in the chair. This is the first time I'm able to do both of us on one screen where we're not yeah. facing each other, not, not facing you, but facing each other because I wanted us to address each other to make things more, a little bit more oh, comfortable. Yeah. We're able to do both. This is very loungy. Uh, I hope if you're watching, you're lounging too. I, I don't know why you would not be comfortable right now because we are. So. Right. So, and that's what I wanted to create. Just Joel's first time on podcast. I wanted him to be vulnerable. Yeah. 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 And. Man. Receptive. I always drink the glass of milk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's... The Mountain Dew kicked in. Dude. Oh, man. Oh, man. Apparently it kicked in on my dog too. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So, awesome. All right, we'll go ahead. Yeah, well, the dogs, good job. <laughs> Dad needed that done. Dad needed that blanket kicked all over. Dad, Dad needed that. He's looking at you. <laughs> what are you talking about, dude? Yeah. <laughs> you kind of look like Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> oh, man. Um, if, uh, I, if I could just get paid to be a stunt double. Okay. Right. Right. You never see my face on camera. Just like the, the, the back 35% of my head when it's necessary. Um, uh, I would quit my job right now and just be one of his. Yeah. That would work out. Yeah. I, I'd be, you know, I, actually, I, uh, when I was in, when I was growing up, I was very, I don't want to say hyperactive, but I was one of those guys that would like to taught himself how to jump off a roof and, and do a rolling landing. Okay. I was very acrobatic and, and, and whatnot with skateboarding and doing like extreme kind of. I'm thing. glad for you. I, I ate you know, doing all of it. Where I would jump off of, of, a, of a tall roof onto a pool with the skateboard and go crazy. You know, so I was very adventurous and yeah. stuff when I was a child. And so when I went in the army and I was able to do that stuff full time, yeah, uh, it was awesome. I just didn't like obviously the hierarchy and the political side of the military. So when I got out of the military, I still kind of kept with it, and I would have loved to have been able to stay in the type of shape where I was able to still run through a jungle with a full load, parkouring all over the place, and just having a blast. Yeah, you know that to me it sounds like a great time. And I, yeah. I wanted to be a stunt person also yeah. at some point because I thought, yeah, dude, I'd love to go, you know, crashing in a car, jumping out of. I've already done all that stuff in the military. I'll do it some more. Throw me out of a perfectly fine airplane. That would be awesome. It would be. Um, I'm sure all of those people definitely, you also have to love that because there's going to be a physical toll. Um, even when you're good. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You're good and you do it well. It's like if we were, you know, I'm sure Richard, if he was here, we know, you know, wrestling is to me um, one of the ultimates where, you know, you people call it, you know, staged, fake, whatever they want. Um, but the, the sheer physicality right. that has to be demonstrated to not only entertain you, um, but most of all, pretty much not kill each other. But to maintain that level of athleticism, even into the 40s and 50s, I mean, not everybody's the rock. No. You know, like... And, and, and even he will have to say, I'm sure he'll tell you that he is spending an immense amount of his day um, still training constantly, eating right, right and just right. the you know the ways that that um, that he is to try to keep what he has. But I'm a, I'm a huge fan and supporter of like the stunt community. Yeah, I have friends that do stunts in Hollywood. Um, I was a big fan of Zoe Bell for a long time. We're just not going to have movies with any sort of action at all. Fall guy. A fall guy, which is the fall I mean, guy is fantastic. That, that's its own episode alone. But I mean, I would say if you haven't seen the fall guy, please see it because at least for uh, Special the stunt effects, and yeah. the love it gives the, the the stunt people. Yeah, it's it's a movie that uh, I think will entertain you from the second you start it till the, literally the very 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 end. Um, I'm gonna just say no other movie made up to this point gives this much love to to those people. Right. Um, you'd be surprised the things that they have stand-ins for that they pay someone to walk in just to walk on a certain area of cement in a certain part of the city because they do not want the actor to trip on uneven cement. They still have to have somebody do that to doing, you know, like we're talking, you know, epic, you know, over end, over end car, you know, rolls and explosions and just everything that you have. Excuse me. Every fight scene. 
even the dogs, no. even the movie dogs that have to do stuff because movie no, dogs gotta do stuff. Cool so, um, but ch check it out. It's uh, you know, there's some good. Sorry, the dog is distracting. Yeah, but they do that. They don't know. They they never know you're recording. Right. They don't, know. They don't care. I mean, they know. Which is why they do these things. But that's a people problem. But we don't let them think that we know that they know. Yeah. Uh, seen any movies lately? Have I seen any movies lately? You want to take a sip of that before? <laughs> oh, yeah. I did see some movies lately. Uh, I did see that Long Legs movie. Oh, you did? I did see it, yeah. But um, Without spoiling, because I haven't seen it. What do you think? And, and that's the thing is that I really don't want to spend too much time on it because um, I went into it completely dry, was told virtually nothing about it. I mean, we're talking a sentence or two. A name was flashed to me of a person that may, you know, is in it. Cage. And I thought, okay, yeah, I'll just go. That's fine. Um, I don't want people to walk into it any other way than I did. And probably most people already know too much. Okay. Um, I know nothing about it other than Nicolas Cage and uh, conflicting reviews. And this is why the reviews are conflicting is because honestly, I think um, people are all going to individually have their own feelings about the film uh, that I think are going to be very polarized. I don't, I don't think the, the folks that I even saw, like it was, they were very polarized. It wasn't kind of like mixed in the middle. Um, so you do, you don't. What I want to tell you is, is that I think the way I kind of look at a film, and I think a lot of the way that you would, you know, when we've talked, is that to make a film, it takes a lot of people doing a lot of things. You, you've got storyboarding the writers the, the set the pro i mean I, I really you know you know i we don't have time to go through you know the myriad when you're looking at the credits right especially when we're just trying to find out if you liked it or not. uh long story short <laughs> um i can i can like a lot i can like percentages of a movie and things about a movie um all i will tell you is that i i very much enjoy the art direction okay um i think the aesthetic is going to make people pretty happy if you like if you like a genre of horror, okay, and of suspense, um, you want a mixture of the psychological and a little bit more than that. Uh, but honestly, you got to just go see it. Really, if you're going to go see it, don't learn much about it. You may love it, you may hate it, uh, but I am I'm glad I did go see it. Um, so, but again, please, if you do not like horror, this is not for you. If you do not like horror at all, do not go watch that movie and be mad at either of us that you saw it because we warned you. Okay. Don't, don't look at me. I have not seen the movie. I am not giving any kind of review of the movie. He's not doing any review. I'm, I'm just not, telling you. I'm not saying not in about nobody. Now there's two dogs in the office. Yeah, two dogs in the office. And so if the, the camera falls over, it's a tail. Yep. <laughs> right. But, um, what I will say about movies in general... Again, we're talking about art and all the people that it takes to make something. Um, if you're watching a movie, and let's say overall you really didn't really love the movie, you don't want to watch it again. But if you watch a movie and you are paying attention to a lot more about it, did you hear the musical parts of it? Did you hear, you know, guess what? Some of the dialogue might have just been absolute trash, but some of the wide shots might have been awesome. I'm just saying. If like Godzilla Part 2. If you're looking... You will find something in there probably somewhere that was actually pretty good. And because somebody on that project nailed it. Maybe out of 10 people, five of the people were like, look, dude, we got no budget. Just do this. So they just did it. And some other folks actually pulled off something awesome. So did you like it? <laughs> I, I was glad that I did see it. Okay. Okay. But again, you know, it's uh, you got to. You have to kind of, I think you're going to want to be into the genre. If you're looking to see, uh, let's say, you know, uh, I don't know, an Austin Powers sequel, then, you, then then that's not the movie you see, okay? Yeah, if you're looking for a good time, a smiley fun time, Long Legs is not it, okay? <laughs>
But uh, if you like something dark, you like the aesthetic, you know, go do it. Um, I'm actually stretched to think the last comedy I saw that was was really awesome. Can you think of one? A comedy? Yeah. I don't think there has been. A, a, maybe a Lip Nicky? Stanley Lip Nicky? The, the John oh, Cena? Oh, Ricky Rick Stanicky? Yeah, that's it. Okay. I actually, I'm going to go ahead and take that back. I did see Ricky Stanicky. Um, I think if you've got a nice, wide open sense of humor, I think you absolutely love that movie. <clears throat> it is designed for one thing, to make you laugh. And it's it's the lowest yeah. brow comedy you can come up with. But you know what? Um, it goes in the category of feel-good movies. Meaning by the time you're done, you know, you've laughed your ass off. Somehow they manage to always, again, somehow make you actually feel a little bit of emotion for these completely fictitious ridiculous characters but um it's a good time it's a good time and um totally different than the other movie you know what i mean and that and that and that's the beauty right now being alive right now man we have we have more options than we have enough time there that's is true. there is so much content if you had no job and you didn't need one and you could just sit there and watch everything you just the thing that you wanted to watch um, you know, I don't know that you could, but that also means you can always reach for some quality. There's always going to be something out there, um, to enjoy. What about TV shows? Are you watching anything now? Um, I just finished a mini series called Eric with Benedict Cumberbatch. Okay. Um, <clears throat> it's just a short mini series. Um, I actually really loved it. I loved it quite a bit, but it's, it's, uh, again, not going to be for, for, for everybody. Um, Miniseries are awesome. Miniseries are great because I feel like some things you can't do in just a two-hour movie, but you don't need six seasons and an epic saga where you're starting to lose your writers and people don't know what's going on. Right. Um, you know, eight, ten episodes, fifteen episodes, um, stories that people can kind of get it done. Um, Which is why I'm loving Evil right now. Uh, I was told to watch it. I got it loaded up. I just haven't started it. So. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That movie's the show is fantastic. Right. It's only twelve episodes a season. Okay. And it's on episode nine of the fourth season right now. Okay. But they're so easy and so smooth to watch yeah. that you kinda get mad when it's over. Okay. All right. Well because you want more. And it's so ridiculous. Okay. It's, it's amazing. You should watch it. Look, when you're when you're enjoying something and again, that's when, 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 the, when it all, when a plan comes together, okay. Can't handle. Uh, you know, I just, I, I can't help it. I'm an you know, the, the, the famous leader of Hannibal. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's a lot, there's a lot, of, there's, there's quite a lot of Hannibal's going on now. At this right. Point, but yeah, specifically that one. Not, not Lecter. Oh no, 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 no. Two very different gentlemen. Right. Uh, like you. Yeah. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Evil. <laughs> no, I'll definitely give that a go. Um, man, that's another thing. Doing art while watching things. Yeah. Well, there's, okay, there, there's two types of TV shows that I've discovered out there in the world. There's, uh, actually, there's a lot of ways to group everything in your life and different things. Uh -huh. But anyway, two, two types of shows I, see, I notice out there. The show you really want to pay attention to and watch and absorb every minute of, and the show you can have on in the background. Oh, yeah. Very now, the show you have in the background, sometimes it's just a familiar show, an old show, or just an easy to watch show that you really don't have to focus on, but you can still enjoy hearing it. And that's because you're doing something else, cleaning the house, the dishes, uh, cooking, barbecuing, uh, drawing, writing, gaming, whatever. Yeah. It's just on in the background. Noise. Yeah. Uh, you know, football for uh, uh, barbecuing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, you just have that all in the background. So uh, there are some, sh some shows out there I enjoy just for that reason. Yeah. Just the background noise. And so I did MASH recently. I wrapped up oh, on yeah. MASH. Yeah. Because I just needed that background. However, being a Korean from Korea, the family that grew up in that time period, I, I found myself crying more than laughing during that show. 
Uh, yeah, MASH is its own Funny episode, it. too. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of reasons why that show is significant. Uh, a ton of reasons. But yeah, very... that's funny because that, that show you can put it on the background while you're doing things, but then you can also immerse yourself in it. Every now and then you're just sitting there, dude. What? What's that? It, it's 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 oh. both. It's both. Oh yeah, the, yeah. Stop, you'll you know, laugh like... and then they'll get you, and then some of it's so sappy, corny, it's awful, but it's great. So, but um, yeah. Versus other things where if you're gonna watch it, you're gonna hide by yourself. You're not gonna answer your phone, and you're just gonna watch it. And if you got, because you're gonna, you're gonna do it by yourself because you absolutely don't want to answer any questions, you don't want to talk about it. <laughs> you're just trying to watch. Don't want to talk afterwards, unless it's scary or emotionally draining. You know, Maybe you might want to call mom and see how she's doing. <laughs> yeah. But if it's something you really, really want to watch, you know what I mean. Uh, especially if it's something weird and you're just it's not something other people are into. Yeah. You know, I'm not gonna subject people to, to just a random. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this one out. Yeah, and that that yeah. for me is evil. Like, I gotta pay attention to you while I gotta focus on you. It's such a fantastic show with all little nuances all about that you know you have to pay attention. But then, you know, you get a show like Modern Family or any of the rom coms nowadays that, that you don't really take serious. Yeah. You just enjoy, you know, those are good background movies. Yeah. Shows. And I, I, I try to binge both at the same time. I gotta have that dramatic, can pull you in. I gotta have that, I don't care what's going on in the background noise. Because I'm always busy doing one or the other. Yeah, I don't. I don't think ever, you know that we all ever have to agree. But um, my take on it is that we have this range of emotions that we can have. Um, I think maybe the more of those that you can satisfy in the healthy environment, right? You know, <clears throat> I mean, Stephen King's quoted a ton of ways of talking about you know basically you know how horror serves that need for us, right? Um, if you're watching that movie. You're reading that thing. You're collecting that thing. Horror toys, horror comics. I mean, <clears throat> you know, but then all the way over to comedy, whatever it is, you know, and again, you know, horror is not for, I think there's probably definitely hardcore horror is going to be a smaller percentage of the overall population. But if you can enjoy dipping into as much of the different things in those emotions, it's, it, it's an outlet. Right. What well, have I have, you know, stand up. I tell everybody, if you're having just like the worst day, honestly, nobody's day can stay terrible after a solid hour of good stand-up. Depending on the stand-up. But you said good. I said good stand-up. So <clears throat> that means you know that it's going to make you laugh. If the comic really lays it down, and I mean, you'll find you're going to be frustrated the first 10 minutes because you're trying not to laugh because you're trying to just be in your misery. And, you know, you're just like, ah, yeah, that's funny. But, you know, I hate life. 20 minutes, 25 minutes, you know, you've been smiling a little bit. You finally laughed out loud a couple times, <clears throat> you know, 35 minutes in, you're having a good time. You still know you have a bunch of crap going on, but by the end of it, you know, you are definitely better than when you started. And that was simply by just watching somebody for, you right. know, you know a, a Netflix special or something. And they just killed it. So. Joel's trying to take everything way deep. Also, I'm not promoting any specific viewing streaming service, by the way. <laughs> so if I forget to omit a company name, I'm getting no kickbacks. I actually would love it if I was, but I'm not. Right. But if you want to send kickbacks, yeah. <laughs> Joel and AJ need money yeah. at... Hi. If... All large corporations doing really cool <laughs> things. We'll talk about it if you're willing to. We need sponsorship. Sponsorship is great. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. What, um, are you excited for Wolverine Deadpool? I am. I mean, that was something, I mean, I feel like I can't remember the time when I didn't remember people saying, man, I wish that would happen. But. Well, look how long we went wanting Aliens versus Predator. Yeah. So, you know, that was, that, that's why I think. Um, there's a lot of reasons why this is a big deal, you know, um, I know Hugh Jackman was back and forth, not, Hugh Jackman just kind of had made it clear he was done with the role, um, but, you know, it's, it's, it was really not going to happen, and then somehow it happened, and they kept it under wraps long enough, um, and everything lined up, and they were able to do it. 
Well, my understanding is that it was Hugh's idea. But there was a period when, you know, and, he wanted to get Right, no, he was anti it all, all over the place. Yeah. But um, him and Ryan had got together and talked about it, yeah. and they decided, oh, let's make it happen. And, and he even had come out at some point and said, look, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not putting my body yeah. through the Wolverine yeah. workout. I'm not putting the mentality I need to go through, any of that stuff. Yeah. And that changed now because he got to work out and do everything with Ryan yeah. as buddies. And so his mentality was able to change. So it wasn't the what, it was the how. And right. so so I think that's that's I'm, mo I'm mostly excited because uh, again the the project is being done by people who love it and want to do it. Right. And so they're giving us really what they and, want. And have no problem talking shit about themselves. No, no, there's no you know, this look, nobody involved in this needs money. They're all doing great. You know, at this point, they could just say, you know, screw it. We're not going to make any good content anymore. We're not going to make anything anymore. Um, but it, from what I saw, what bits I saw, just just the chunks, uh, the level of quality and love and entertainment that was put in there, uh, it was is given to us. This is a gift to us. We're going to go have a good time. Mm -hmm. And um, it'll make you want to revisit the other ones. I already have my tickets. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, because again, art form, you know, acting, um, all of it, especially people who are writing, producing, acting, doing all of it. Um, you know, I mean, so many actors go through those stages, right? And end up, you know, eventually all behind the camera, um, if they're lucky, right? Right. Um, so I think, I think we're going to get, we're going to get a real treat and, uh, you know, let me ask you, have you seen the, the popcorn bucket for the new Alien Romulus coming out? I haven't. I'm going to show the people first. And then I'll show you for those who haven't seen it. Wow. Now the top opens up and that's where the popcorn goes in. It would have been more awesome if the jaw opened up and the yeah, metal yeah, jaw came yeah. out. And it was holding, but you know what? I'm I'm happy with the way it works. That's still gonna be pretty awesome. I'm still gonna get one. Yeah, it'll be the one non-transformer thing I display in this office because I I need it to hang up against the wall, yeah. like in the Predator ship. I, yeah, you know. And Absolutely. now, from now on, I'm gonna go and try and learn 3D printing so I can make more skulls, like on the more Predator big, ship, big skulls to fit up in my office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and hold popcorn. <laughs> that I don't eat, man. Yeah, that's funny. I, I can officially say I've given away popcorn mm -hmm. and just gotten the bucket for things. In fact, I wanted the popcorn out of there because I didn't want the butter all over it. <laughs> oh, that one right there. Oh, yeah. From Transformers the movie. Yeah. The popcorn bucket and the cup. Yeah, right on. And I ordered it. I didn't want popcorn in it because yeah, I don't, no, I don't eat sure. popcorn. No. Uh, so I ordered it and it got delivered to my house. So I can have a popcorn bucket. But I had to have it, right? Yeah. <laughs> you can just look at it and understand why. I, this was the cover of like many notebooks and folders oh, yeah. and all it was on it was on the main back of it's most on, of the G one. It's on my, my lunchbox up there. Yeah. And that was the art that came with everything. That was the original art that you saw. So again, this supports again kids of a certain age that the art I was telling about earlier between the friends, you know, drawing things blowing right. up and zapping. Right. You saw his uh, face when he saw it. Uh it's it's you know, we were just we were redoing, you know, the same art that we saw in a lot of packages. I mean, what do you see characters doing? They're coming, they're advancing, they're flying, they're shooting stuff. Right. Um, so you're drawing it yourself, but um I mean just that art. That's what I'm saying. Like the look on your face right now told it all. You right. went back. Oh yeah. And if you look at that art now, and you really look at it, that is an immensely detailed, it's still beautiful, good art. beautifully yeah. painted piece of art. It was again designed for a toy for children. And um, but again, you look at the art on that package. Um, just look at it. 
you know, and, and really look at it. So even as a kid, you know, and then you see it very different now as an adult, but it's served both purposes, you know, because ultimately who's making stuff for kids? It's adults trying right. to re-remember what it was like to be kids. Kids. What we felt like when we saw first saw those images on the yeah. like, show up on TV, you know, all the emotions and all that stuff. But ultimately, you know, that's why, you know, they have uh, they have testing situations where they have, kid, you know, kids come in and play with toys. And uh, to the best of their ability, you know, there might be something you and I think is amazing. And they bring in, you know, 15, 10 year olds and all of them are just like, dude, this toy sucks. <laughs> you know, you poured your heart and soul into it for nine months. Well, you know, oh, well, you know, um, you're not a kid. So we don't you know you're not always going to be able to know. But you know, some people nailed it for us. And, you know, obviously, you know, as, as adult collectors, there's adults making things for adults because uh, now they're all older and they're just giving us what we all wanted. Um, I mean, where do you think Five Nights at Freddy's Company came from? Our childhood at Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. I mean, those characters are undeniable. And, <laughs> uh, because there was always a certain level of nightmare creepy to those things. Um, I did see them malfunction many times when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't, I can't really... I'm sure the percentage of times when you saw that show as a kid at a party that it did not work right is much larger than the time that it worked right. Somebody's eyeball was the other way. Somebody's arm didn't work. They were trying to put on a Disney Disney level show with a Radio Shack budget, you know, and it's yeah, Radio Shack at the end too, when everything yeah. was on, you know, eighty percent sale. Um, and the batteries lasted five seconds. Oh, man. So, but you know what? Um, but even then, it, it's funny is that, you know, as creepy as that was and as really bad as the pizza was, and... It's still popular. It, it's still a thing, and I've taken, you know, I've, you know, taken people there, people, you know, friends, you know, kids that had parties there, and, you know, I just go and I just shut up, and I sink some quarters into some stuff, and I play <laughs> some games. Throw some ski ball and just have fun. You know, get indigestion from some bad pepperoni pizza and just relax because you know what? Um, it's bad, but you know what? If you let go and you just have fun, you know. And you stay out of the bathrooms and the janitor's closets. Yeah, don't touch anything in there. Uh, once you've touched anything, don't touch your face. Uh, pretty much keep hand sanitizer on you because there's probably not a single surface in Chuck E. Cheese you want to touch barehanded and then touch your face. Or, but, you know, find some dip from, you know, the movie Roger Rabbit, and just dip your hands in that. Yeah, it's gonna kill everything, but I mean, you know, it's- As long as you're not animated. As yeah. long as you're not drawn, you'll be fine. You're good to go. Right. Just watched that again recently. I watched Roger Rabbit on a semi-regular basis. Still holds up, yeah, in it, my, my point of view. It holds up, it's, and really actually, I think what people you know, might forget is that that movie had characters that normally would not be together. Right. Um, that there was a bit of mixing of, of animated characters that contractually, honestly, really never showed up together. But because it was about tunes in general, you know, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't see how you could watch that movie and not love it. You know? Um, yeah, I agree. Yeah. You know, it's like the Muppets, okay? When the Muppets are on it, they're good. They're hilarious. You know, anybody, if you haven't seen the original old school Muppet show. I was a fan of not the newest iteration, but the one before that, where like David Grohl was yeah. on there and all that stuff. I was a fan of that because it was more adult stories, but still with innocent understanding. Yeah. You know, they were like on a talk show themselves. And well, stuff, the thing know. is, you know, the Muppet Show. But has it was too adult and it got canceled. And oh, that, yeah. that broke my heart. Yeah. And that Dave Grohl episode was great. Him and Animal going at it. Yeah. Like, it was something we all thought about at some point. Because they always had a musical guest. Yeah. Okay. And at some point there was going to be a number. Um, and, you know, no matter what you're doing on this show, you know, there's going to be the entertainment of the singing, the dancing, all the different stuff. But at the end of the day, People are talking, human people are interacting with puppets as if they are real and they're on a show. Right. It's it's totally ridiculous, but that's good medicine for you because how serious can you be while watching that? You just can't. So while you're doing it, um, it's, it's silliness. It's also an amazing art form. I mean, if you've ever seen production photos or any, any video ever on, on how 
Henson Studios did everything, just just puppetry in general. It's ridiculous that they gave that to us. The amount of effort put into, uh, again, just a puppet to entertain children is well, the same with the cross. You know, everything they did was yeah, way complicated. And, yeah, and their puppets were definitely over detailed, not realistic. Yeah, uh, yeah, amazing. Just so they can show up in you know that one music video. <laughs> Land of confusion. Yeah. Oh, man. But seeing Reagan pop up out of the water <laughs> and just all the parts of it. Um, but, again, that's that's where, you know, also for another episode, uh, sometimes we don't always, I think, you know, really, like, want the realistic, real version of something. Right. Um, you know, it seems to be the push to always do the live-action version, the live-action version of everything. And... You know, like, I mean, do you really want a live action Ren and Stimpy? Yeah, God, no. Okay. Again, you know, that, that art form was meant to be that way. Right. It, it, you know. Um, but, you know, the first Space Jam was cool. First one was cool. Yeah, first one was, first one was cool. You know. So, yeah, I don't want to see a, a live action version of that or a part three of that. You know, but you know what was great? Happy Town Murders. Happy Town Murders. Wait, I did see that. That was hilarious. With Melissa McCarthy yes, as the that. cop. Yeah. yeah, in Muppet. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Again, as long as you've got a nice, loosey goosey, fun sense of humor, <laughs> you're gonna be just fine, and you're gonna laugh a lot. Um, you know, it's. Uh, yeah, that that's another another way to have your puppets. <laughs> and eat them too. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, well, we should probably wrap this up. We've been going yeah. quite a bit now. But I, I did want to ask you a couple of other questions real quick. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, what's, what's going, where, where, where can we find you next within the next couple of weeks? Let's say, are you doing any oh, shows, okay. anything like that? Things that I would be doing. Um, so the last Saturday of the month, so that's not this, you know, Saturday coming in a couple of days. I believe that's the 27th. Sure. No. 20, no. 28th. Yeah. Sure. Last Saturday of the month, uh, I'm going to be over at Retro Volt Arcade in Calamesa. Um, uh, so I'm going to be part of a, a couple DJs that are going to be knocking it out on the turntables. Um, and everybody that's going to be doing this is going to be really awesome. Uh, they're going to be dropping some good 80s fun, uh, like I said, on the turntables. But I'm also going to have a toy booth. I'm going to have. Uh, two eight foot tables, so 16 feet of just some range of different toys. Um, uh, people who are dressing up, if you go down there, uh, if you dress up remotely 80s, just, just give it a try. Okay, um, I believe they're giving it a cut rate. I think it's $5 an hour a game. Uh, it's gonna be a good time, but like also I will have some of my art there. Um, there's gonna be other vendors that are gonna bring some really good stuff. Um, there's gonna be a lot going on down there, so I'm really excited for that. Um, I have projects that are going to be done and going to be available. Um, you, you heard it, people. You guys are my yeah, witnesses. Yeah, yeah. Uh, those are going to be available. Um, I, I just I just got to do some art at the IE Drink and Draw, which uh, um, on Instagram is uh, always shares everything that everybody does, and people just sit down and have a good time. Um, again, you know, community. Um, everything that I'm doing is probably including somebody else, and that's probably the biggest driver to help me remember to do things. So, you know, I'm not just going to have a toy booth on my own, you know, other people are telling me about it. There's, there's community, you know, um, any project I'm doing, like the ones that really give me kind of the most drive, uh, are going to be the ones I'm trying to do for other people, you know, and again, time, time sucks. You don't always have a lot of it, but so when you're trying to figure out where you're going to put that time, um, you know, uh, I'm not saying putting too much heavy meaning into it, but, um, I mean, some of the projects you do, you know, you will look back on forever. And um, I mean, there's there's projects that, you know, I've done a few album covers, believe it or not. And um, a lot of the bands are not around anymore or whatever happened, happened. And, you know, that, that album cover maybe really didn't get much light, but I have all the originals, I have all the pencils, I have all the color versions, I have the scan versions, I have, you know, um, you know, it's, it's, keep it, you know, so. 
So Retro Volt? Yep. Anywhere after that? Um, gosh. Uh, immediately lined up. Uh, <laughs> things wait. Uh, I've got some stuff in December. Um, some shows I want to do, but I am working with some friends. We're trying to figure out what we want to do for August. Um, I do like to be involved in not only just, like I said, like toy conventions, um, art shows. Um, I try to work with a bunch of different friends, and uh, we're doing a lot of different small events, doing, you know, turntablism, uh, a lot of DJ work. Um, but I do need to collect all that data before I tell you, because I'm working with multiple people, so I want to make sure I get the right times and dates. Well, in um, that aspect, then, why don't you tell us how to find you online? Um, so really, honestly, my Instagram is the best place. Um, it's Fictional Studios. Uh, when you type it in, um, you're going to see a nice green, green googly looking, kind of creepy looking logo with a white background, Fictional Studios. Um, that's all pretty much art, but you can contact me there. Um, and you, you should add the Instagram anyway, because it shows a lot of great sample of his artwork, most of which I will be stealing here in a couple minutes to splice in uh, to the interview. Uh, anything anybody sees, I do hope if you like any of it um, and it makes you feel like you want to draw, that would be the best thing I would want to uh, see happen from that. Um, but just just know I was having fun when I did it. And so, like I said, if it spurs you wanting to do it, please, like I said, grab anything you got laying around. Literally dig in the junk drawer and find that, you know, that crappy Sharpie that's like completely smoothed around the corner, but it still works. Just have fun. Okay. Uh, real quick, where, where would you say uh, your art style is like? What would you compare your art style to, to if you wanted to describe it to anybody? I mean, I will tell you, if, if you leave me to my own devices, um, probably my favorite thing to do is just going to be pencil and ink. Um, that's probably my favorite go-to, but um, luckily over the years, um, from a lot of exposure to a lot of good friends that were amazing artists and just learning from really, I've been lucky to be around a lot of amazing people who helped me. And, um, uh, so now, uh, color, color, I'm really practicing, having a lot of fun, um, doing the IE drink and, uh, drink and draw. Um, it's, <clears throat> it's an opportunity to try to, you've only got a set amount of time. You've got to produce something. There's no pressure. But in that time period, you just sit down and you're going to make something. Um, so that's really been awesome. But playing with color, um, I am trying to learn some new styles, okay? Not necessarily copy from other artists, but... Just expand your options. You know, your yeah. Uh, look at the things around you. So I even still do it. You know, you're, you're just all these different stages of being an artist. And, you know, that's why I, I also collect art from people. I have a tons of art by other other artists where I was lucky enough to buy the original off them for not thousands of dollars, you know, it was just right. a small art show. And I think it's a masterpiece and I've got it up in my house, but I refer to those when I'm trying to think about how I want to do light, how I want to do color. And if there's something I'm just not understanding, I'm like, well, I love that one picture. So I walk down the hall and I'm like, oh, that's how they did that. So, um, it's not really a set art style. It's, I, yeah, I'm sorry. I know that was supposed to be a simple question, <laughs> uh, but you know, you did give me the, uh, so, so, um, uh, honestly, I, I also know. take great pride in, in denting, uh, this man's tolerance levels <laughs> because they are legendary. So anytime I get the gauntlet yeah. thrown, I yeah, do my yeah. best to put him yeah. Yeah, my in wood, harm's way. My wood shield. <laughs> broke it um but as far as art style honestly i definitely say if you were going to put me more on like i said the pen and ink and cartoony style i mean i can do some some realistic art but honestly um probably my favorite place is is to do something grody and silly and when i say grody just you know just the the style itself a lot a lot of a lot of squiggly lines a lot of um so not straight, hard, definitive, transformers. Yeah, lines. basically, yeah, call it what you want. Call it battle damage. Call it, yeah. you know, um, uh, it's not just uh, necessarily style. Is that uh, that particular style is one of the ways that I got around having trouble, ha you know, getting that perfection. Right. You know, I'm not worried about doing a perfectly straight line as long as I'm able to create the, the appearance of nice and straight with some nice broken you know, beat upness in between, you know, it lightens the load on me. It, it makes it easier for me, but it adds some character to the art. So that's what everybody's going to find their own little tricks and ways. Um, 
tattoos, you know? Don't but, look at me like that. Yeah. I mean, you got... Don't look at me and say these things. I, I have no tattoos. No tattoos. Mom, I don't have any tattoos. I know, Mom, I have Won't let me get any. Mom, none it's the of Korean us, way. I know. None of us have tattoos. None of us none ever of us have tattoos. What's that over there? Uh, okay, we really have to go. But yeah. Holy Grail figure. Holy Grail, like the the like the most cherished one you can want or have that I have or don't that I, or don't have. What did you tell me? Is the one you don't have something you still want more than the one you already have? Remember. Simple question. <laughs> We've been here an hour and a half now. Oh my gosh, that, so, that, so is, not, that is not a simple question. Um, so I will, I will say, uh, uh, just, just off the top of my head, okay? Uh, one of them I do have, um, and one of them I could probably have, but I just haven't pulled the trigger on wanting to pay for it. Uh, or when I could, but uh, a complete inbox, all the foam, all the red armor, everything, including the clip that holds the rifle, a jet fire. Yeah. Um, Which one? G1? Oh. G1. G1. In fact, if you the, the even, Robotech if you, cross version. Yes, yeah. if you could even find me uh, a mass a macross version, but the one that actually ended up being, like I said, the jet fire. So the same. You know, right. I think it was Roy Cocker. That's what it was. Yeah, metal metal hinging. So yeah, yeah. Um, that would be one I don't have. What was it? Rick Hunter. It was Rick Hunter. Actually, I think it was Rick Hunter. Yeah, yeah it was Rick Hunter. It was a skull and crossbones. Yeah, yeah, because he had the red, uh, the black, and the white. Falker had uh, the blue, blue and black. It I thought it was uh, the other one. I thought it was. Oh gosh. I hope anybody, nobody sees Anyway, that. anyway, well, yeah, it's not, no, it's yeah, not falling well, under that trap. All of it. This is extra okay. sad because I'm actually a Robotech fan. But, um... Back to the Holy Grail figures. So, you, want the, you want the G1 Macross yeah, jet that, fire version, okay? And what's the one you already kind of But have? the one I actually have, and it's probably, uh, it's funny because even though I'm an epic G.I. Joe fan, I love my Star Wars, I love just a, really a, a multitude of different things. Ninja Turtles, you name it. Um, but probably one of my favorite ever which actually uh there was a time when we were looking at potentially evacuating the house and we did evacuate now when you have to evacuate your house because of fire all of a sudden you realize what everything's really worth <laughs> what you really want and uh there's a company uh that's no longer 3a um there's a separation between an artist ashley wood and three zero so it was 3a but now three zero is still around and they do make amazing stuff uh, but when they were together, uh, they made a thing called the Blind Cowboy. And it is a giant one-six scale horse. I'm trying to get my hands in front of that. I mean, the horse itself is, it probably weighs 15 pounds, I think. Um, the art they put into it, sculpting just the dead horse, and it's completely shrouded and like hand-painted in just this messed up fake leather um, the cowboy, like I said, six scale, he's a foot tall. Um, there's no way I can be able to explain it to you, but if you've ever seen uh, epic paintings of cowboy art, I know this is going to sound far reaching, but if you've been, ever been in a hotel that has this art, someone's house, maybe one of their grandparents had <clears throat> some like three foot by, you know, three and a half foot painting of a cowboy just kind of head drooped hat down mm -hmm. and the, the cowboy and the horse are clearly almost like, like the mall man pose yeah okay um the way that they did this actual six scale figure and like i said you know at the time you know not a lot of people were doing serious painting weathering dry brushing and so this thing just looks aged and it's a mixture of plastic and a ton of like cloth uh long story short it's it's i i i uh i i i don't have pictures of it, but I wish I had pictures of across the street of me hauling butt to the car with this big stoop fake, you know, fake horse with a character on top of it. Um, lost one gun, uh, but um, 
Yeah, so if you ever just want to see the art of it, they did make a 112 version, but it's the 3A blind cowboy and horse. Um, the artistry is ridiculous, and they're very hard to find, and they are really expensive now, so I feel very lucky that I got it at a price when it was very reasonable. Mm -hmm. um, I think I paid about 350 for it at the time. Um, they're pushing a grand. So when I say holy grail, it's because I got in at a time when I could have it. Right. Uh, now I would probably never have it. I would never pay that much for it. So it's holy grail because, again, very few of them, and just so much artistry. Uh, um, Ashley Wood being the artist, and that marriage between the artist and the company that already knew how to make quality toys, when they came together, they took his art and made it three-dimensional to a quality level that is over the top. Anyway, that's that's. I'm not going to beat that horse to death. No, you know. No pun intended, yeah. But uh, anyway, it's it's been good to be on the show. I'm glad I got my first time over. Um, it's uh, There's plenty to talk about. I guess that's one thing I realized after my first time. Yeah, <laughs> we have plenty to talk about. Yeah. Don't worry, there's plenty of time for you to come back over. And yeah, there's no shortage of things to talk about. So just uh, thanks, you guys, you know, for rolling with me. You know, thanks, AJ, for pushing me to do it. Um until we see, until I'm on again, just uh, you guys take it easy, be good to yourselves, try to find time when you're not working on all the other things to do to enjoy something, you know. Um, we clearly have enough things that we enjoy and collect, and they are there for us whenever we're having a hard day or a good day. Um, so just put a little time and a little bit of money into into something that's just for you. Um, I'll end with that, you know, and then AJ, I'm sure he's got something he wants to say. But uh, Oh, am I allowed to talk now? Um, I mean, you know, I was hoping you would. <laughs> so. Everything he said and more, guys. I just want to thank everybody for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Please remember to go and visit his website, or I'm sorry, his Instagram. Instagram, Fictional Studios. Yeah. Check out all his artwork thank you. and like it. Follow him, all that stuff. Uh, he's phenomenal, and he's a good, good friend as well. Um, yeah, so everybody else, please remember to go visit our website. Please follow us on Instagram. Everywhere that you can, that social media is, for Ben Panel, there we are. Um, next week, we will be live streaming at about 8.15 on Wednesday night. And we will be reviewing the Acolyte, uh, the season finale of it, as well as Crisis on Infinite Earths Part 3. And uh, so that should be an interesting show. Right. I'm also going to be reviewing on the side panel this week, Axel F, Part 4 to Beverly Hills Cop. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I have it queued up, ready to go. I just haven't pulled the trigger on it. I have a lot of excitement and reservation. It's a it's a mixed emotion with that. But um, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and trust. I'm going to trust the cast. I'm going to trust the little bits that I saw. And um, I think I'm going to go into it just wanting fun. Because I think that's what they just that's that's what that's what that that those movies are about is fun. So good. Then I won't have to spoil it for you. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in, and I will catch you guys on the next episode. Yeah, last piece sign. I already gave like four. <laughs> All right, take it easy, guys. Bye.